Of course, we'll welcome your comments or whatever suggestion you may have for it this afternoon on all the matters that we are dealing with this afternoon here on the polls. Now, let's talk about what happened in court this week. Now, legal opinions are divided on the Supreme Court judgment that declared the Speaker of Parliament's decision on the four vacancies as unconstitutional. The APS court yesterday provided a detailed explanation for his decision to uphold the suit brought by the Majority Leader Alexander Fingermark. And according to the APS court, a member of parliament is deemed to have vacated his or her seat if they change their political affiliation and continue to serve in parliament under a new party identity. Member of the panel of judges that decided the Afrenia Marking case on the interpretation of Article 7211G and H, Justice Ahmed Tonko, has cut through the judgment of his colleagues, describing it as an aberration of the known rules of the Superior Court. A member of our legal affairs team, Koko Asante, joins me in the studio as we unpack the reasoning of the court. Also here from the Attorney General. But first, Koko, you're welcome. Thank you, Alte. So first, uh, let's start with the reasons provided by the majority group on this panel. Yes, Yao Dakwansari, Justice Yao Dakwansari, appointed to the court in 2019, wrote the lead opinion for the, the, the majority, five of them, Yao Dakwansari himself, Justice um, Tokunu, the Chief Justice, Justice Samuel Adibu, Maria Mousu, they formed the majority on this matter, NS Yao Gaewu. They, 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 they said that for a member of parliament, on a ticket of a political party to be said to have vacated the seat, that person must not only evince an intention in the, for, in the future to contest on a, on a different platform, but in the current parliament, that change must manifest itself. Mm. So when it comes to, say, the member of parliament for whom, the member of parliament for Aguna West, and the member of parliament for Amenfi Central, not only should they say that their change in, in circumstances for the 2025 parliament, mm -hmm. but that currently in parliament, they are no longer MPP MPs and are independent MPs. Mm. If they say they are independent MPs currently, that is the ground on which they will lose their seat. Let me quote. Right. It says, in the result, we hold that upon a true and proper interpretation of Article 971G, the legal elements of that provision can be formulated as follows. I, an MP must vacate his seat, too, if he leaves the party under which he was elected, to join another party or become independent and seek to remain in parliament under that new political status. And then similarly, they do talk about 971H, where they say an independent MP must vacate his seat if he joins a political party in parliament mm -hmm. and seeks to remain in parliament under his new status. So they go ahead to list a number of members, members of parliament who in the past actually did change the political platform and still remain in parliament. Honorable Gladys Nsua in Kintampo, he sought re-election in 1996 on the NDC ticket, although he was NPP in previously. Honorable Dr. William Makoto, he served as NPP MP for New Abraham between 2001 and 2004, and then returned his seat as an independent MP. Joseph Osewusu, the first deputy speaker we know, was an independent MP for Bekwai from 2009 to 2012, and then later contested the 2012 election on the ticket of the NPP. So they go on and on, and they say that the reasoning behind the speaker's declaration and its reading of Article 971 G and H is vitiated by the fact that it seeks to effectively rewrite the 1992 Constitution by positioning political parties as de facto owners of parliamentary seats. According to this majority opinion, if the speaker's opinion should hold, political parties will now be the ones who, who own the seats. And they can decide that this person has left our party even though he's still caucusing with us in, the, in, in Parliament, we have decided to take him out, and that, and that seat is lost. And so the majority, in this opinion written by Justice Yao Dakmasari, say the Speaker's formulation of Article 971 J H was wrong. And then the, the, the others, the yes. two, that took a different position. Right. It started from Amadou Tanko JSC, and in fact, he started right at the outset declaring war. He said, I quote, I do not hasten to proclaim that I've apprehended with despair the majority's conclusion in this suit, but I state with utmost deference to the Honorable Chief Justice and the rest of my brethren in the majority that not only do I fundamentally disagree with their conclusion, I, with all due respect, also find their decision an aberration to the established and accepted judicial position of this court, with which, with profound respect, I hope in no distant future, the resultant usurpation of the constitutional prerogative, the High Court, incidental to the majority decision, will be reversed. Mm. And we should clarify that 
Justice Tanko is not necessarily disagree with the majority on the facts of the case. Right. He says, when it comes to this matter, the Supreme Court did not have the exclusive original jurisdiction. That is, the case should not have started from the Supreme Court. The case should have gone to the High Court. And if, by virtue of Article 131, there was an interpretation issue, the High Court would have stayed proceedings and referred the matter to the Supreme Court. The court would have dealt with it. He continues by saying that the present dispute, which invites the court to determine whether the seats of the MPs affected by the Speaker's pronouncement have become vacant, is vested in the High Court and not at all in this court by any canon of interpretation. By assuming jurisdiction in the court, this Supreme Court is rather usurping the special and exclusive jurisdiction of the High Court on the issue, a situation which in itself is spare in Curium, the 1992 Constitution, and potentially unconstitutional. He, hold, he held no bars there, really saying that the court should not have gone into this matter. The view was taken also by Justice Lovelace mm. Johnson, who joined him in dissenting. And, and then there's a part where he makes the point that maybe in the future this is, can, can be reversed. Yes, he says that he disagrees fundamentally with the majority opinion, the view that was held by the Chief Justice and four other judges on the panel. He says he has such a fundamental disagreement with that opinion and that he hopes in the near future, the same Supreme Court, because we know that the court has the inherent powers to go back on this issue and all that. So he says he hopes that in the not distant to future, this position that was taken by the Supreme Court will be changed. And I quote, he says, I, with all due respect, also find a decision and aberration to the established and accepted judicial position of this court, with, which with profound respect, I hope in the no distant future, the resultant usurpation of the constitutional prerogative of the High Court, incidental to the majority decision, will be revealed. That is Justice Tanko writing in that 109-page ruling that was published by the court yesterday. And then there's also the other angle introduced by the, the, the Speaker of Parliament's lawyer, Tadio Sori. Yes. Tadio Sori has taken to his Facebook page yesterday, together with Justice Sai, who formed part of the legal team for the Speaker at the start of this case. They say... But if you read the constitution, if you read the provision, uh, the, the, the judgment of the mm -hmm. court, there was no order directed at the Speaker of Parliament to do A, B, C, or D. Also, you will recall that when the, an, an initial five member panel of the Supreme Court voted to stay the decision of the Speaker, they made what is called consequential orders. They right. directed the Speaker mm. to allow those four MPs to come to Parliament and do their work, blah, blah, blah. But this time around, the court stopped at saying that any interpretation, that has been put on Article 97, 1G and H, that is not in consonance with the new interpretation this court has put on those provisions. It's null and void. It does not mention the speaker. It does not make any orders directed at the speaker. Tadio Sori says, because of this, the Speaker of Parliament has no role to play in this matter. And that, in fact, the court has not said that the Speaker of Parliament should perhaps admit those four MPs to come in. Let me quote part of what Tadio Sori mm. has been post, has been sharing on Facebook um, since last night when the court did uh, uh, publish this. It says that um, Tadio Sori, in this opinion, says, in effect, all the court says is that the constitutional provisions in controversy bear the meaning they have put on them without positively saying that they have declared the Speaker's decision null and void. Mm. There is no repetition of the ex parte orders that Afenio Markin got. It says again that, now let's remember that after the Supreme Court has made a declaration in the exercise of its original jurisdiction, it is required under the provisions of Article 2 to make such orders and give directions as it may consider appropriate for giving effect. There is no order, this is Sadio Sorry speaking, mm. there is no order saying that the MPs must be allowed in Parliament or order directing that Parliament recognize the said MPs as earlier ordered by the court, contained in the majority decision of the court. The order staying the execution of the Speaker's ruling is now spent. Alton, we must say, although, that despite the court not having given that, mm. in the Abu Ramadan case on the NHIS vote, the court did give a, a similar ruling of this sort. Abu Ramadan did go back to the court and ask the court to now make consequential orders. Right. And the court did that on a expedited basis. So if the majority leader is so minded, he may do so to clear up this quote-unquote confusion that some persons have said has been caused by the judgment of the court. Before I bring in the Attorney General, uh, what, what, what are you getting from the majority side in Parliament? Is there any process to get a House in session? We understand that the majority leader has been meeting with both the President and the Finance Minister in France. Uh, over the last few days, right. the President has been outside. Mm. Majority leader has joined them and they have, they've had meetings. They will decide 
exactly what they want to do, especially because the finance minister has such a key role to play in this. Mm. The, vote on, uh, the vote on account of the, the 2025 first quarter budget is also expected to come before the election or right afterwards. And it's barely three weeks to the December, uh, 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 the December election. Mm. And so the decisions have to be made as to whether or not they will force the hands of the Speaker to recall Parliament between now and the 7th December, or they will allow the Speaker to call, recall Parliament on his own volition. And if nothing happens, perhaps force him to recall Parliament. But as we speak, the decision will be taken between the majority leader, the President, and the Finance Minister, who are all outside the country. Now. Okay, thank you very much for coming. And let me guess, on page 36 of the court, uh, the decision provided by the court, it concludes by saying that in, it is in the light of all the preceding discussion that this court determines that the plaintiff's suit succeeds on the merit. In the result, this court grants the plaintiff the relief 1A, B, and C, and makes the following orders. An order declaring the interpretation placed on articles 971 G and H as inconsistent with the true meaning and import of article 971 G and H of 1992 concerns. And some say that this is enough order for the, for the Speaker of Parliament to act and act accordingly. Well, in the last few hours, the Attorney General and Minister for Justice, Godfrey the Award Amen, has mounted a spirited defense of the Supreme Court and criticized one of the judges who dissented. He spoke on the midday news uh, this afternoon. Specific relief sought by a party and to the matter, and those reliefs were upheld by the court. If you look at page 36 of the judgment of um, the majority, that is um, the one authored by Justice Dakwasari, <coughs> he made it quite clear that in light of all the preceding discussions, this court determines that the plaintiff's suit succeeds. And then he proceeds to say, in the result, this court grants the plaintiff the reliefs 1A, B, and C and makes the following further order. An order declaring the interpretation placed on Article 97, Clause 1, paragraphs J and H, as inconsistent with the true meaning and import of Article 97, Clause 1, paragraphs J and H of the Constitution. So clearly, the orders were made. And so we really have to look at the relief sought by the plaintiffs. Uh, the plaintiff, and the plaintiff's relief, one, mm -hmm. which was granted in its entirety was in these terms, a declaration that upon the true and proper interpretation of the 1992 Constitution, the light of Articles 2, 1, and all the other provisions that he states. A, the final of nomination of Honorable Andrew Esama Amwako, the current independent member of parliament for formula constituency in the Asante region, with the electoral committee to contest the formula parliamentary seat on the ticket of the MPP in the next or ninth, ninth parliamentary republic of Ghana, does not amount to vacation of his seat as a member of parliament in the current eighth parliament of the Republic of Ghana as an independent party to join the party. Then he repeats the same for Honorable Cynthia Morrison and Honorable Kojo Asante. Mm -hmm. So at least in, in respect of these three members of parliament, three distinct orders were made by the Supreme Court to defend that the change of their political or the anticipated change of their political identity for the ninth parliament or the elections which will occur in December 2024. Does not amount to a vacation of their seat. What does, what does it mean? It means that they have not vacated their seat and they still hold on to their seat as members of parliament. You, and that is quite clear. I mean, I think that we must stop this unnecessary resort to some infinite or artificial technicality. This clear artificial technicality, it doesn't arise at all. Okay, so I mean, you so you And insist. if you look at Article 2, Clause 1 of the Constitution, based on which the Supreme Court made these orders, mm -hmm. it says the court is the one vested with the sole and exclusive decision to interpret the constitution and of course declare any act or omission on the part of a person as unconstitutional and that the supreme court shall for reports of declaration make such orders and give such declaration and such a declaration has been made such orders have been made by the court clearly so you insist that you, to, to so you insist that the apex court gave effect to its orders but is it executable is the question it, it is not, why not i mean so if, if the court makes an order that A, B, or C persons have not vacated their seats. What does it mean? Does it mean that they are still members of parliament? Yes, they are still members of parliament. And that is the, the whole import, the hope of, of the exercise that is undertaken by the Supreme Court. So I think that we must stop um, um, this unnecessary um, attempt to resolve some artificial techno technicality and say that um, there, there has not been no other made by the court. I mean, it's, it's there in, 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 plain, in, in plain black and white. So it's executable, but who, who, is vested, who is vested uh, with the powers to execute this, as you're saying? You say it's executable. Who is supposed to do that? So, so after the Supreme Court 
has stated that ex-member of parliament is still an MP and has not vacated his seat. What does the person have to do? The person has to just walk into parliament and go and sit and take his seat. And if there's an attempt to prevent that, that will then amount to a violation of the Supreme Court ruling. So that's the Attorney General, I mean, explaining his position on this matter. Now, Parliament is still on recess, and it's unclear whether the Speaker, on his own volition, will recall Parliament to sit, or whether the MPP caucus in Parliament will trigger the necessary provisions in the standing order, and of course, in the 1902 Constitution, to force the Speaker's hand to recall Parliament to sit, at least for the third time. That's, we are learning, is likely to happen uh, early next week, because there are some key governing business that was happening on the floor of parliament, including the presentation of a mini budget, if you like, to take care of the first half, uh, the first quarter of 2025, plus other key government business that they want to execute. Now, we will we, we'll watch this space carefully. President Kufuado is in France. The majority leader, Alexander Fenemarkin, is with him. Some discussions are ongoing. The speaker, we are told, is also out of town. But everything will clear out, hopefully, uh, early in next week. We'll deal with this matter more. But for now, let's talk about something that, for me, is good news. Now, the Ghana city is on a sharp rise against the major currencies in the last five days. It's been on a rally. Now, dropping from 17.2 uh, cities to $1 to 15.9 to the dollar, as we speak this very afternoon. To the same currency this week alone. Now, in the studio with me is Isaac Kofiaje from our research desk to discuss uh, what really is accounting for this massive show of force by the Ghanaian cities against the major trading currency. And just not the dollar, it's also appreciating against uh, the British pound sterling and, of course, the euro as well. So, Kofi, Monday, for example, on my way to work, listening to the business news and then the 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 exchange rates and it was it was over 17 cities yeah and this afternoon 15.9 what is accounting for this well just like you put it this is good news uh, per the data that we've analyzed so far this is the first time in a long time mm. that the cd is actually gaining more, close to about three percent mm. against the dollar in just five days this week alone, mm. we can actually do a cumulative gain of about 3%. That is very, very significant and good for the health of the city. Mm. Moving from that 17 cities, somewhere around 17 cities, 20 pesos, yeah. 17 cities, 50 pesos mm. to now, between 15 cities, 90 pesos, and 16 cities, 20 pesos. That tells you that that margin of uh, you know, appreciation or that uh, level of appreciation is very, very huge. Why is this happening? Uh, this happened just about four days mm. after the Bank of Ghana decided to inject $240 million into the system to help those who are bringing in pharmaceuticals and all the other uh, you know, imports into the country. Mm. And this has really, really helped the city to gain some sort of respite. Now, not just Bank of Ghana's current intervention, but we know what is also going on in the U.S., where... The Federal Reserve has cut down... 24 hours, interest. yes, 24 hours after... Uh, Donald Trump's re-election, we saw that the Fed decided to cut their monetary policy rate, which essentially means that the supply is going to be available. And Bank of Ghana, you know, did the intervention at the right time. And currently, we are seeing the city gaining significant values against the dollar. Is this going to continue? Well, continuation, we are not so clear. I mean, we are looking at the data, and the outlook is not really that clear. Mm. But for the city to gain 3%, in just uh, about five days, that tells you that, I mean, if demand pressures begin to slow down, which usually you have when you are getting to the end of the year because, uh, because of the, the hike in exchange rate, people would, would want to import, mm -hmm. you know, the last quarter goods somewhere around maybe September right. or August. They do it early so that when we get to the last quarter, they wouldn't have to battle with exchange rate situation. So that has actually eased the demand pressures. So if Bank of Ghana decide to still come in with their interventions, trying to put in more supply, then this might continue. Now, trying to use historical data to interpret this, we all saw what happened in 2022, when the city went as high as, uh, I think, around 15 cities uh, to the dollar. And 
when we were just entering Christmas in November, we saw the city gaining value against the dollar, um, moving from that 15 CDs to somewhere 8 CDs, and it could even get as low as 7 CDs, 80 percent. We do not know if the same thing will happen this year, but what we are learning currently, or the data we are observing currently, is that the CD is on a good run against the dollar. So today is Friday, yeah. November 15. So the Bank of Ghana started trading at 16.07, uh, mm -hmm. buying and 16.08 uh, uh, selling. That's even inter interbank, right? That, that is even interbank. Yes. And as we speak now at uh, 323, it's below 15 now. Below 15, mm -hmm. absolutely. This is the first time the CD is going below 15 uh, in about one month. Mm -hmm. uh, it, has, it has always been above 16. Mm -hmm. And I've called a number of forest bureaus trying to also check from... Uh, some credible sources such as uh, Bloomberg and some of the 23 dealer banks. And what we are learning is that this is actually very accurate. And this is a general sentiment currently very positive in the system where the, the city is really responding to that intervention that the Bank of Ghana did on Monday. But if the Bank of Ghana continues to pump in more dollars, I mean the pros and cons for such an intervention? Yes, I mean, there are others who are argue that when you have the CD appreciate in this manner, it is always some sort of artificial you know, appreciation. Mm. We saw a similar thing happen in 2022. Especially, Bank of Ghana could have done this, and you, we had a governor. He said, if I want to drive the CD down to seven CDs now, you can do I it. can do it. But the key question is, whilst you are doing it, what happens to your reserves? It was because of your depleted reserve that sent us to the IMF in 2022. So if you keep doing some of these things, what happened to that, your reserve, which is just slightly about, about 3 point, I think 3.2 months of import cover. Mm. Bank of Ghana will be worried, IMF will be worried, and we've seen the IMF program where the Bank of Ghana is actually precluded preclu from actually doing some sort of these interventions on a regular basis. Mm. But, I mean, 240 million uh, in the last quarter really, really came at the right time where there was rate cuts in and then also i mean last or this week for example the the head of the u.s federal reserve says that they would do another revision yeah and the possibility of reducing interest by another quarter percentage is very high if the u.s federal reserve continues on this trajectory a global currency you know response how would that especially for developing countries like ghana well once you decide to cut the rate what happens is that you are making uh, supply available and that is really good for emerging and developing economies like us, you know. So when U.S. decides to cut another rate, it will be good. But it, it will depend on the magnitude of that rate cut that we are, I mean, the Fed promised investors or the, uh, the U.S., you know, economic space that they were going to do at least two rate cuts. And we saw the first one. They had them chasing the rate cut for more than nine months before they did the first one in September. Second one has come through, promising a third one. It depends on the magnitude of the cut. But, I mean, whatever happens in the U.S. must be met by sufficient supply, mm -hmm. right? So if U.S. still cuts and the uh, available dollars doesn't find itself into our space, we do not get the supply, it will be difficult for us trying to pluck some of the holes, especially if we talk about remittances, for instance, where between 2018 and 2023, about $12 billion of remittances that mm -hmm. were supposed to come into the country, we could not account for that. All of these factors, if we're able to pluck that hole, will help the city. We've seen a number of banks since, uh, you know, uh, somewhere in November last year and now, four commercial banks, four dealer banks have mm. actually had their foreign exchange trading licenses suspended for about a month because of some of the breaches. And we also have a number of fintechs who have also had their, uh, you know, uh, licenses suspended. So there are regulatory gaps mm. and it, it depends on how the Bank of Ghana will, will actually solve that when they are even trying to do some of these interventions. I, I know you're talking about the dollar, but I'm also seeing that the pound cent is also seeing yeah. a decline. Currently on the, on the, on the, on the Bank of Ghana X space, they are quoting 20.4 for buying and 20.43 for selling. The same is going for the euro, even though the, yeah. the, the, the release spoke about dollar. Mm. How come it is also having an impact on the pound sterling and the euro? I mean, it's, 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 it's a general sentiment. I mean, when the city is performing against a major trading currency like the dollar, it is uh, somewhat automatic that you might have some of this, uh, you know, infiltration into the other trading currencies. But with a pound, it's still very high. 20 cities to a pound is... is, is 
It's still very high. Right. But usually the reason why we talk more about the CD is because of its universal nature in mm. terms of trade. The dollar. Uh, exactly. The dollar mm. is because of its uh, universal nature in terms of trade. So, I mean, it's good to, to see possibly all three major trading currencies. I'm talking about the pound, the euro, and the CD possibly all falling against them. And, and finally, before we go, we are in an election year. We are voting in the next, uh, in, in, in almost, yeah, yeah. In, it's on a few days from now. I mean, how, how do you expect the city example to behave post the elections? I mean, the uh, Bank of Ghana has been clear that they have what it takes to, to, to make the city very stable. And for me, the, the, the biggest worry is the fact that we could not get the 1.5 billion syndicated loan. If that had come in, mm. we would have possibly seen a dollar to the city about, let's say, 12 cities or right. 13 cities at the moment. Mm. But because the syndicated loan, which used to come somewhere around September and November, didn't come through, that really tied the hands of the central bank. But the assurance is that they have the supply to meet the demand. And look, I mean, businesses forecasted. They knew that it was going to be tricky uh, trying to bet on the last quarter. So they did most of their imports uh, in the third quarter. That's good news for us. And in the current, uh, the fact that we are about just 22 days to the elections, mm. it is good that we, we are having some of these interventions. As to whether the Bank of Ghana will continue to do another intervention, that is a decision that they will take by themselves. Well, we thank you very much for coming through. And the news this afternoon is that the city started trading around 17 Ghana cities, 20 pesos west to the US dollar at the start of this week. As we speak today, Friday, it is now trading at 15.9. That's significant. And the reason has been explained. We'll take a short break here on it, but when we return, remember last year, the Asante Hine Otunfo Oset to the second launched a $10 million fundraising activity to heal the Confanoti Teaching Hospital. One year on, is the project done and dusted? Has it been handed over to the hospital? We'll have that response for you after the break. Right, so we're back here on the pause. Now, remember last year, November, the Asante Hine or two and four, or say to the second, launched a $10 million fundraising activity to heal the Confanoche Teaching Hospital. Hospital that was to undergo healing. Confanoche is a major referral health facility in the Ashanti region, but again, serving health needs of patients in 12 out of the 16 regions in the country. Now, since its construction in 1955, with an original 5,000 bed capacity, the main ward of the hospital currently accommodates about 1,200 inpatients. Now, the facility has been refurbished for many years with portions of the building uh, developing defects, uh, including the ceiling, tiling, and general ward environments. Now, a year on, is the hospital fully refurbished and how much has been raised? Uh, we have the answers for you, and Sami Adubuachi leads the fundraising activity and joins me in the studio. Sami, you're welcome. Thank you very much. It so my, my first question is, is the project done? Is it done and dusted? Is everything ready to be handed over to the hospital for use? Thank you once again, Elton, and to the multimedia family. We are grateful for the opportunity in helping to push the agenda of healing Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Mm. After 70 solid years, mm -hmm. uh, next year Confanochi Teaching Hospital will be 70 years. 70 years. 70 years. Mm -hmm. And this is the first time um, the hospital is seeing this major uh, facelift by the courtesy of our dear king, His Majesty Otun Force to the second, mm. and also the visionary leader, uh, Professor Dr. Dr. Ochre Ademan, so having to make this happen. Interesting, having to ask that, uh, have, are we done and that? Yes. We would have wished so. Um, renovation is one that comes, it's about three times having to attempt to build something. Mm -hmm. You spend time to demolish, you spend time to gather debris and you spend time to construct. Now, within, even, even within the construction, it gets to a point that you realize that what you actually planned, you may have to even go back and then do something different. Right. So um, those in the construction industry understand what I'm saying, that it is a very difficult task to do. You recall that during the 2008 uh, World Cup, the President Kufo wanted to demolish the Kumasi, uh, mm. renovate the Kumasi Sports mm. Stadium. Remember, it later had to turn out that they, that's how can we got the, the VIP section. No, it, there was a renovation for the entire Kumasi Sports mm -hmm. Stadium, but then they realized that the cost was too much, so they had to do the Tamale and then Isipong right. in addition to it. So it's quite a difficult one, and it's even more expensive 
to uh, do such a task. So we have not finished, but we are thankful. But, but you, you, you didn't demolish the structure? Um, what you, what you, if you look at the video, it is the physical structure that we haven't demolished, but everything within the wards that A block that we've Inside. been doing mm -hmm. has been demolished and redone. Mm. Everything mm. has been demolished and redone. So um, as you can see, those watching, you realize that a lot has gone into it. And we are happy to mention that um, by the support of the general public, by the support of our major donors, hopefully within the next two weeks, the hospital will have these two demonstration floors handed over uh, and commissioned by His Majesty the King. So what have you done so far? So, so far, um, one key thing that we are proud that we did was the roofing. Of an teaching hospital, for all the years, had a major problem for leakage to the extent that within the hospital or the lining wards, if it rained today, two weeks after, some of the wards will still be leaking. Mm -hmm. By the initiation of this project by His Majesty, today as I speak, if it rains, no nurse or patient is afraid of the leakage or the drainage that will come on them any longer. Mm. That's one of the major things. I recall the director of administration telling me, that Chairman, you have solved 150% of our problems for us because leakages from the roof was one of the major things. And having achieved that, it's a big milestone. Now, and, 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 and this leakage is not happening to a school, a classroom blogger. It's happening to a hospital that is accommodating people who are very sick, who are very and, sick. And, and going through treatment. Yes. And you know, in a hospital, once you don't have the right atmosphere, the rate of recovery obviously is different. right. Anywhere you find a good hospital with a good atmosphere, staff uh, morale is high, patient recovery is also equally uh, very high. Mm. As I speak now, we don't have that problem, we don't have that challenge, mm. no more leakages. So um, that is a big uh, milestone. Now, another um, change factor for this project that is uh, worthy to uh, mention is the fact that hey, that to this uh, project being done, in any ward, you find one or two beds with oxygen ports. Mm -hmm. Today, as I speak, every bed within the block as part of the project will have an oxygen point. So we don't have to be carrying or one, we're waiting for a patient to be okay before we move around patients, etc. Now, washrooms were one of the big challenges. I tell you what, Confanochi washrooms have been in such a state that when you are a visitor and you are even passing by, you didn't want to go there. Mm -hmm. You, the visitor who is strong and healthy, how much more the person who is his lowest self? Mm -hmm. Today, as I speak, two washrooms for uh, patients, two washrooms for staff have been uh, tripled. We are having three washrooms for patients, uh, six washrooms for patients, two washrooms for staff. And this is for the entire ward or no, the floor? No, for one floor. Okay. So six washrooms. Each, on each side, and also provision have been made for persons living with disability. Mm -hmm. Now, within this hospital, it is a bit sad to say that there was not one fire detection system. In the entire facility? In the entire facility. Now, this project has made it possible. Every floor has a fire detection system with the patient's call to the nursing station, and then also um, the ventilation system has mm -hmm. also been improved. Key among this is the fact that if you were admitted at the hospital for, let's say, a leg injury, you were likely to go home with malaria because there were no mosquito nets. Mm. We have been able to make provision for mosquito nets. So now, nobody would wish to say that, please, doctor, or affluent people asking that we give them a specialized ward or a special ward. Mm. Every point of this project makes a place special that you would not need to make a, re uh, a request to be placed somewhere that is special. So, Sami, what is next now? I mean, what, 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 what is left to be done? What is left to be done? Okay, so you mentioned about what you were also asking about the, one of the major challenges. One mm. of our major challenges has been the lack of space. At the hospital? At the hospital. Space for expansion? Space for expansion, space for us to... You see, we are doing one full block at the moment. We would have wished that we had the block to ourselves, but we had to do it in phases. That's why we're saying that the first phase is almost done and yet to be commissioned. Mm. So ask yourself, where, where are the patients that we took from the... In fact, I was coming to that, that yes. as you are renovating the existing structure, where have you taken the patients to? So there has been a makeshift structure uh, where we used to have the COVID patients, mm -hmm. and then also another makeshift for the A2, uh, A3 and then A4. 
um, the chief executive and his team are doing everything possible to relocate the A2 into the uh, psychiatry department where they have also seen a major facelift kind courtesy of another benevolent donor. Mm. So when that is done, it means that by Easter would have been able to complete the entire uh, A block. So the, the, the space you spoke about, the means Confalote has exhausted all its space for any serious development. So we pray that nothing untowards uh, happens for us to be found wanting. I remember some time back when I, was at, when I was with Love FM, I remember I accompanied the tune for on an inspection tour. And then together with that, Urban Babin was then the, the health minister. And then the Ashanti regional minister then at a meeting with the Kofanoti chief executive professor or any, I forgot the name. I mean, the, the understanding was that the military compound very close between the Ashanti regional police command and then the other gates that will take you to the Asian emergency ward. My understanding was that that place has been given to Confanoche, but what was left was for the military to now pack and leave. Okay, I'm unable to speak into detail uh, for that, but I know that um, I, the process is still, is still ongoing. It's not a, a, a one day or one night affair, so that process is still ongoing. Mm. Even with that, what it means is that, let me go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, there was an attempt, or there have been previous attempts to renovate the hospital. One of the contractors that was commissioned to do a detailed work on it, their plan was to build an e-block. Mm -hmm. That means that they were going to build a new facility altogether mm. before relocating the patient to be able to start. You can imagine what cost that was going to bring mm -hmm. alone. Mm. So uh, for the space, we are managing, but we are optimistic that when the two um, facilities that are near, nearing completion, Aferi and then um, uh, Sewa, when they come into uh, operation, it means that there will be a lot more or a, a, a less pressure on Confanochi alone and we'll be able to find a way to move patients from there into another uh, hospital for us to be able to speed up the pace of work as it is. Now, le now let's talk about money matters. And the target was to raise $10 million in November last year. And how much has been raised, what is outstanding. But before we do that, the MPP flag bearer, Dr. Ahmadu Baumia, uh, he's still in the Ashanti region canvassing for votes, and he made a donation uh, to, the, to the Hill Confanoche project. Uh, so uh, 200,000 Ghana cities? 200,000 Ghana cities. Um, it was led by uh, Dr. Insia, sorry, the um, advice, presidential advisor of on health. health. Mm. And he didn't just come to do that on behalf of uh, the uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, he said, I have been sent to give this token as a start because once we are here, we know what His Majesty is doing, we know the progress that the hospital is making, they cannot just pass through. So he gave this token of 200,000 and he himself added an additional 50,000 and has assured that they will come back stronger to support the initiative. So this is a personal donation from Dr. Baumia? It's a personal donation from Baumia, Dr. Baumia, and then also uh, Dr. Insiasari, who was a former CEO, the longest serving CEO of the hospital. Perhaps uh, the NDC flabber also follows you. It is our and prayer. <laughs> it is our prayer that they show up. Uh, we need everybody on board. Every Tom, Dick, and Harry has to be on board. What happens is that, as you mentioned, where were we or where are we in terms of our family? Exactly. The good news I'm hearing today about the exchange rate dropping uh, CD to dollar is, is one that is exciting to some of us. Because we take our monies, as you can uh, you really see, Dr. Baumia donated his money in cities. If you mm. convert it into dollars, that's about $11,000 as at uh, two days ago. Mm. Today, I'm sure it's going to come to around $15,000. Right. That is uh, a good amount of money. Mm. So um, at about 39, 38% of our target, we are grateful to those who have supported us. But there is more room. 39% of how, that's how much you've collected so that's far. How much we have and that will be $3.9 million. That's $3.9 million. Mm. So using today's exchange rate, maybe you could maybe say about $3.9 million. Mm. Yes. Uh, but, but why has it dragged? I mean, Otunvo leading a, 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 anything should bring, you know, more than 100% success. And a year on, we are even yet to cross the 50% mark. Alton, it's a good question, but let me be very confident to tell you that nowhere in this world would individuals contribute as much as $4 million to such a project mm. within a space of... And it's a public facility anyway. It's a public facility that private individuals 
showing that love and patriotism to be able to bring good health care to the people of Ghana. Confanochi is attending to 12 out of the 16 regions of Ghana. So mm -hmm. it's not just within our, 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 our frame. Mm -hmm. We have done well. There is more room for improvement. We know that a lot of people will come on board. People, you know how things work. There are a lot of naysayers, or there were a lot of naysayers. <laughs> but seeing this, it is enough encouragement for people to come on board. Let me tell you what. Uh, uh, two weeks ago, one of our big donors, uh, uh, he doesn't want his name to be mentioned. Mention. He had given us one million Ghana cities. Uh, an individual. An individual had given us one million Ghana cities. So I called him that, look, um, Chairman, uh, His Majesty has asked that you also come and see the project and share your ideas. These are people in the uh, real estate industry. He came, he looked around, and I was with the architect of the project. He just looked up and said, this is what I was expecting. You guys have done well. In addition to the one million Ghana cities that I have given you, I'm providing you two additional lifts. Mm. And these lifts for patients, mm. goods, etc. I tell you what, one is costing about eighty thousand dollars. So that's, this person seen the work. The eighty thousand is more than is more than the million he's already donated. So he looks at it and he goes like, "Wow, you guys have done very well. You have made His Majesty proud." Mm. And he was one person who warned that, "Look." Using his majesty or his majesty leading this, we can't do anything haphazard. Even if the money that we take can do one block and do it very well, we should do it. Mm -hmm. So when he came, an A-grade citizen didn't have one criticism to the project. Mm -hmm. So um, we are optimistic that people having to come around to see what is happening will be gingered to give. And are there special incentives you have for those who are donating? Corporate institutions and individuals. Okay. Now, let me talk about corporate Ghana. Confanoche is a place that has about 5,300 workforce, permanent work mm -hmm. staff. Every day, patients that throng to the hospital for medical care. That's the OPD. The OPD is over 1,200 every day. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody is coming as a sick person, more often than not, the person is also accompanied by one or two persons. But sometimes it's, it's disheartening to see people you know, taking shelter in the, under the accident and emergency center, yes. and sometimes where they bath because they, they've brought a relative from, from maybe outside uh, the outside region and they have no, nobody to put up with. So they are left with no job but to sleep in the open. So to a corporate society, any, any corporate entity listening, this is a place for you to have your visibility. And once you donate, we will give you that uh, opportunity mm. to be visible. For instance, one person has adopted one block. Let me mention his name and bow. Um, Jasmo Construction. Mm. One of the blocks, now you remember uh, they are called A, B, C, and D. Yes. One of the blocks will be named Jasmo, or whichever name that he chooses that we, we, we get. And then also another donor, uh, Joshop Construction, has also adopted one block. And one, uh, that block will also be named according to who he says we should. Mm. But within these uh, walls of the hospital, we are going to create walls of honor. So, for instance, with the support that we have uh, received from multimedia, when you are working within the hospital, you'll find a space for multimedia brands within these walkways. Mm. So, to every corporate entity, remember that we are going to give you space to be able to make your product and brands visible to all these numbers that I have mentioned, a 5,000 workforce, 1,200 patients accompanied by their um, uh, relatives who are coming around and then suppliers as well. So it is not just like you are just donating. There are walls of honor. There are other things that we will do to be able to make your brand very visible. All right. A uh, few questions as we begin to wrap up. So, I mean, Asante region has a lot of mining companies. Legal and illegal. <laughs> I don't know whether uh, they are on board. Yes. And, and, and I'm also interested in knowing whether the, the various district assemblies are also taking advantage of the drive by the tune for to make this work? Okay. Uh, to start with the mining companies, a lot of engagements have been had. Letters have been written. Um, we are yet to hear from them. We know they are preparing to come. Mm -hmm. They are close to about 13 mining companies. Right. The confines of where Confanoche, where within their mining operations, if they've got any emergency, they will rush the person to is Confanoche. Mm -hmm. We are hopeful that we will hear from them. Anglo Gold, Ashanti, Newmont, uh, Asanko, uh, Goldfield, Stakwa. Um, there are quite a number of mm. them. There are quite a number of them. We know that we will hear from them. But as I speak, no mining company 
has shown up. And that's very sad. It's, I don't want to say it is sad. It gives me a hope that when they come, we'll be able to raise the amount of money needed to be able to bring Confanochi to its appreciable mm. level. When it comes to the politicians, MMDC's um, Sampine, I remember, has showed up. The KME mayor. The KME mayor. The regional minister has also showed up. But these are on an individual basis. On an individual basis. Um, let's pray that they show up very soon. Mm. Because maybe, let's say, you say, I've been watching Jaya now, where they now, OCC, you know. Um, let me be kind enough to separate this guy called Sticker. Mm. The MP the, for Ishaya. So the Deputy Finance the Minister. The Deputy Finance Minister. Stephen Amwa. Wherever you are, Stephen Amwa, we are grateful to you for your support. You know, Stika is doing something personal at Konfanochi, which is very huge on his pocket. Personal. Mm. Beyond that, Stika gave us an additional 50,000. Ophiri Chrome MP gave us 50,000. Um, other MPs, about seven of uh, them, Honorable Chairman Sabonzi gave us 150,000 together with his wife. Mm. Um, Eugene Enchi gave us $5,000. About nine MPs. Honorable Asensu is part of the project. That's right, how I see right. it. Asensu giving me 100,000 or 200,000. In fact, the project is in his constituency. Oh, no. In actual fact, uh, politically, it's in Subin. Okay. But the, uh, the location is Bant, mm. Bantma, all the same. Um, so Asensu, uh, Eugene, Chairman Sabonsu, they are quite, uh, they are about just about nine MPs who have showed up. Mm. And imagine if all the 47 of them came, if everybody is given, we will be able to uh, make some. Do, do, do you expect to? To, to achieve this 10 million target? When do you expect to achieve it? Um, when everyone is coming on board. The initial plan was to have every 1 million Ghanaians donating 100 Ghana cities. That is beyond corporate Ghana and, and then uh, government agencies, multinationals, etc. However, they haven't been able to come. But if everyone, people were a bit skeptical, like I said, seeing this tells you that, look, the guys are serious and the money is being put to good use. We well, coming to that about transparency and judicious use of the money that is coming in, and whether or not it will not go into administrative expenditure, because you guys are a team, and I'm sure you are remunerated for the work that you're doing for the project. And, and the, the, the concern for a lot of people is that, as they donate, is the money going to the project or going into administrative costs? Okay, thank you very much. This is one of the very important questions that I expected to come. Um, dear uh, viewer, take this from me. I'm the chairman of this project. The members of the committee, if you visit our website, hillconfanochi.org, you realize that these are people of high uh, 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 character and proven integrity. Mm. Two of us here, he is the uh, owner of Focus Hospital and also uh, the director of finance of Confanochi is part of it. Um, one board member, uh, a Drew, we call him, Max Olopukwajiman, is part of it. Dr. Ejaku Poku is part of it. Mm. The regional engineer, architect Kojo Dakwa Sante is part of it. JB Holmes, the MD, is part of it. All these are very accomplished guys. I am confident and happy to tell you that none of these people have taken a penny or earned a dime, a CD, out of this project. You are not paid every month? I am the one who is running this project as a CEO, back and forth. I have not been paid a penny. Mm. If I have not been paid, who would be paid? Professor Ochea Diamond, sir, is somebody that you can say anything about him, but when it comes to corruption or leadings, no way, it won't even happen. Even water that we get when we go for meetings at Confanochi Teaching Hospital, it comes from his office. Mm. So be confident in us that there are genuine Ghanaians who will lead such projects without having to benefit or profit from it. Everything that we are doing is very transparent. There's a lot of it on our website, mm. and nobody takes money from anyone. Every, yesterday, uh, the donation that we received from uh, Abel Viper, uh, Vice mm. and then within a matter of hours, we had our, our, our paying slips. We presented it to them. Okay. So nobody earns a penny. We are all dedicated to Inchi. Yes, so... Mm. That we take pride in the fact that His Majesty has commissioned us to do this for Mother Ghana. And so we are not profiteering from it. I have used my personal car for close to two years for this project. Mm. 
If I were your brother, I'm sure you would have told me that, no, you need to get a, a project car. Mm. But we haven't gone into it. We need to have something good to show for people to know that we are committed and that we'll make sure that this is done to the glory of God, to the glory of his majesty, and also to the ordinary Ghanaian to be able to what? Have good health care when it is that you visit this uh, tertiary facility. So the, the commission of the first phase will be when? Um, so within the next two weeks, or within the next two weeks, we are hopeful that we don't give the date. It will come from the administrative office of His Majesty. Mm. Um, the funeral of Achempe Mine is happening within the right. next few days. Mm. And immediately after the funeral is also the return of Seychelles. Mm -hmm. So after that, we are optimistic that His Majesty will take a walk and see what we have done and give us the go ahead. Uh, have you resolved all issues with the GRA regarding the clearing of some of the goods that come in? <laughs> Quite interesting. Today, as I speak, um, we have um, three containers going to Confanoche from for medical equipment. Mm. Um, because of what happened in the past for our tiles and all of that, we are doing all of this without uh, the involvement of anybody. All right. So we are paying our duty, everything. It's okay. And we do not want somebody to think that we want to paint the government black. That is not to say that if they called us that we want to collaborate. In fact, we got that assurance from Dr. Nsiasari yesterday saying that um, they will find a way to be able to help us too. But for now, we are doing it as it is. So in 30 seconds, final words before you go. Uh, we are very grateful to all our donors, those who have donated above the 2,000 uh, threshold. We are grateful to you. Uh, Elton, it is refreshing to mention somebody is able to send us one Ghana city. All of these mean a lot to us. Ashanti has a population of over 4 million. If everybody was to contribute one Ghana, one city, Ghana city, that, that may be, be enough to, to have. Yes. We are looking out for our, the sub-chiefs to show up. We are looking out for corporate Ghana to show up. The mining companies, individuals, uh, philanthropists to come on board so that we can bring hos uh, the hospital to where it is good or worthy to seek health care. Mm. We know that people will show up. Our, our mobile money numbers, if you are watching the... Uh, it's on the screen, um, as it is uh, below the uh, able uh, vice president. Uh, okay. uh, 19, the merchant number is 1955 25, 1955 25, but on any network, star 776 star 1955 hash, and then also the mobile money number is 0544 1955 25. Do Summit. not hesitate to contact us. Our social media uh, platforms are all very active. And once you want to do a donation, or our doors are open. Show up and let's help to build Madagana. It is not only the government that can do it. We are all part of the government and we'll do it together. Samir Dubache is the chairperson of the Hill Confanoche uh, uh, the fundraising committee. And his committee is responsible for what is going on. And the, the plan is to refurbish the Confanoche Teaching Hospital. Before we go, the flag bearer of the MPP, Dr. Mamadou Bame, has promised to capture funding for the Hill Confederacy project in his government budget if elected president, uh, Nana Iyawjima, witnessed a donation made on his behalf uh, to the project and has this report. The 70-year-old block of the Confanoche Teaching Hospital remains a beautiful work of architecture. But until recently, the building had no comprehensive renovation, leading to deterioration of the wards and offices. Under the Hill Confanoche project, renovation of the first ward is at an advanced stage, awaiting final fixtures. The hospital has taken delivery of beds and other equipment to be installed. CEO of CAF, Professor Otre Ademensa speaks of the gains made so far. We are making very giant strides so far as the project is concerned. We are looking forward to having patients moving here uh, by the end of this month, the, this floor and the floor underneath, so that we can have the two floors, first and second floors, ready for renovation. The public has been contributing to the $10 million target, but the project is yet to meet half of the target due to depreciation of the city. But Presidential Advisor on Health, Dr. Anthony Insiasari, says Dr. Baumia's government will capture the project in the national budget. And he said I should tell Kofanochi that he shall, when he wins, which he's going to do, he will make sure that he also come in, governor will come in and back the Hillcalf project so that we finish it as quickly as possible. 
his government will continue this work and make sure that we fast track it and then maybe capture it in the budget so that we can finish as quickly as possible. It's better we complete it as quickly as possible so that the good people of this region and the catchment area will benefit from what is happening. A donation of 200,000 cities was made on behalf of the vice president towards the project with Dr. Insiasari contributing an additional 50,000 cities. The presidential advisor on health also assured some health facilities in the Ashanti region completed by the government will be inaugurated. For Joy News, Nanaya Ojima reporting. And of course, we'll take a short break here on the pause. When we return, we'll hit the campaign trail. We'll come back and we've got at least 30 minutes before we take leave of you here on the pause. And of course, exactly three weeks from tomorrow, Ghanaians, 80 million of us, will queue up and vote for a president and 276 members of parliament. And the campaign euphoria has reached fever pitch with the candidates intensifying their push for votes. They have been crisscrossing the country, appealing to the hearts and minds of the electorates. This afternoon, we, we will touch base with, the, with as many of them as possible. But we'll start from the camp of the MPP, Dr. Mamadou Baumia, who is on a 15-day campaign tour of the Ashanti wing. He's been seeking the support of religious and traditional leaders to solidify the MPP's base in the region. Dr. Baumia has been crisscrossing the various uh, constituencies, meeting with various stakeholders to drum up support for the MPP in the upcoming presidential and parliamentary election. He's expected to complete a total of 261 constituencies. My colleague Nana Wachi Adam is traveling with him and joins us with an update. Nana Wachi, so where are you now and how, how are they welcoming him? Well, Elton, the vice president and presidential candidate of the New Patriotic Party just completed his mini rally in the new Edubiasa constituency. The boss of the vice president is moving to the advanced where he has his 33rd um, stakeholders engagement in the constituency, we meet with the clergy, traditional leaders, and then the Islamic community. Later on, he would have a, a, a mini rally, just as he did in the new Edubiasa constituency, in the Adansia Super constituency as well. And from here, the vice president is expected to move to Formina, where he would have his last um, stakeholders engagement and then mini rally to wrap up a sum of 335 um, stakeholders engagement so far since he began his in the Ashanti region. So far, how many days left for him to bring this to an end? So, Elton, the Vice President has spent 11 days in the Ashanti region, and we have just four days for him to complete the 15-day tour in the Ashanti region. So, four days left for the Vice President to end his campaign tour of the region. And, and tell me, I mean, the Ashanti region, obviously, is the stronghold of the MPP. They are hoping to win at least between 80 and 85 percent of the votes. The, 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 the assumption is that if they are able to do so, they may win the general election. You've been following him around. Is, is the enthusiasm there? What are the people saying? Well, Elton, throughout the engagement uh, the vice president is having with the stakeholders and the party supporters, we can see a number of people joining him to listen to his message. In fact, he's having door-to-door -door campaigns as well, and people are always coming out, listening to the message of the vice president. Um, I have to say that uh, people really come out with him, and uh, you, they are just as we, we, you, you know from the pictures and then from the reports that we have filed earlier, is, is the, the party is gaining momentum in the region with this particular campaign that the vice president started. He is expecting that by the end of his 15-day tour in the region, the party's aim of securing about 80 to 85 percent votes in the Ashanti region would be something that can be attainable. And the vice president has been reiterating it that the party needs a, over 80 percent of votes in the Ashanti region. And if that is done, there's a probability of them winning the presidential and parliamentary election. He has also been talking about the fact that the MPP must win all 47 seats in the region and that there's no need for the party to move out of the its range of getting 47 by even voting for any independent candidate looking at the current standoff that we have in parliament and so for the commitment of securing over 85 percent in the ashanti region looking at the numbers the vice president himself is hopeful that that is attainable 
So my Nana Bauchi Yadom and he's still following the vice president campaign tour in the Ashanti win. Away from the MPP, Nana Kwabi Bidia Kons, uh, vice presidential candidate, Dr. Mary Ann Isaka, we say joins us via Zoom for a quick chat on how it's going. Uh, doctor, good afternoon. Welcome to the poll. So, baptism on the campaign trail, how is it going for you? And if you can unmute for me, doctor. Hello, Dr. Yeah, Marianne. Good, yeah. good afternoon. Yes, yeah. Good afternoon. So, so first time on the campaign trail, indeed. First time for the new falls. How is it going for you? Well, um, the response has been great. Um, the love is organic. You know, we don't pass people around. Um, so the crowds you see are real. Um, so far, we are left with three regions to cover. We are currently in the central region, and the response is amazing. Um, the youth, market women, the aged are all filled with hope. And they are happy to have an alternative to the Diopoli. So the, the, the plan is that you are, you are visiting all 276 constituencies. What is the, the, the central theme of your message uh, to get Ghanaians to move away from the dominance of the MPP and the NDs and possibly give a new lease of life to uh, the, the, the new force? Yeah, um, moving around the constituencies, the complaints have been the same. Um, unemployment, unemployment, unemployment. The youth are distraught and they see no hope in the future. Uh, mothers are worried their children can't find work. Um, in some of the places we visited uh, in the Ashanti region where Galamse is prevalent, um, the mothers told us point blank that that's the work available for their children and that they are not going to stop. And we have explained that there is really no cause for the problems that we face in this country. Mm. Because the country is endowed with resources. I mean, we have gold, we have cocoa, we have oil, we have arable land, uh, water resources in every region. And, 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 and this can actually be harnessed um, with industrialization to create jobs and better the livelihood of the youth. And so there's really no reason, um, apart from bad leadership and lack of foresight and innovative thinking, uh, and of course corruption, that the youth should um, face unemployment and the other problems that, that they face. And are they giving you hope? that they will follow yes. what you are asking yes. them? Yes, I mean, yeah, they are, they are really buying into the, uh, the message that we are giving them. Um, some of them, especially those in the health facilities, are very excited mm. about our policies on the um, snitch revolution. Um, that is going to make it possible for more health facilities and, of course, jobs to be created because under the snitch revolution, we are going to make it possible for contributors to withdraw part of their um, contributions uh, before pension to pay for their health care. And that will create a market capital and attract investments in the space. The market women are also, of course, very excited about the commercial opportunities that the industrialization is going to bring. Mm. We talked about connecting water bodies and creating um, railway networks under our pillar too. Mm. And um, of course, one of the major concerns for them has been the deplorable nature of our roots and uh, we have explained that um with the jobs the government will be able to raise enough revenue to fix the roots right. and also the water bodies once connected is going to create a lot of commercial opportunities for them uh, final question before i let you go um, the, the electoral commission started the deployment of the ballots to the regions security is on high alert generally in terms of the election preparation and everything that, that, that is going into it, are you satisfied with the way things have been done, especially by the electoral commission? Are you confident of the free, fair, and transparent elections uh, in three weeks' time? Yeah, I mean, so far we haven't had any um, reason to complain. Our reps are on the ground, and if they identify any issues that we think should be of um, concern, we'll raise them. Mm. All right. Uh, so let me give you the opportunity to to speak to those who are watching and listening to you this afternoon. Okay. Um, thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I want to um, say to our um, <clears throat> uh, fellow Ghanaian citizens that the new force has really good intentions and plans for you to make your lives better. Please take your time to listen to our 12 pillars of economic freedom mm. and um, 
also, I mean, take your time to um, follow us on the tour. We have, I mean, this tour has been really humbling for me. It's been a real eye opener. And um, I'm happy that some of our competitors are doing it because I feel that in order for you to be um, a responsible and effective leader, you really need to know what is going on around the country. Absolutely. Some of the things we have seen, the level of poverty and deprivation have been really um, uh, um, touching and exceptional. And I think that once you see such images, you will think twice before you decide to put five million under your bed because you will see the extent of damage that you are causing in the country. All right, Dr. Mary Ann, thank you so much for your time. Obviously, you definitely will speak again uh, before the D-Day. Dr. Mary Ann is the running mate for the new force. Uh, that's Nana Kwame Bedi Akon, the independent presidential candidate. Now, in the studio this afternoon is uh, Dr. Ramzi Inusab from the Movement for Change. Ramzi, you're welcome. Good to see you again. Thank you, Elton. Uh, you're looking good as well. Thank you so much. And of course, Nana uh, from Poma spokesperson, Sylvester Saprono. Sapon. Yes, sir. Sylvester. Sapon Saprono. Yes. Uh, yes sir. Sylvester, you're welcome. I appreciate you. How is the CPP doing? We are campaigning <laughs> as hard as we can. We are determined to, you know, help our country mm -hmm. by ensuring that um, Dr. Baumia does not, you know, get re-elected. Why only Dr. Baumia? There are others who are contesting. But he is the pressing danger. Okay. He's the pressing danger to the well-being of Ghanaians. Mm. We gave him everything you could have ever expected, mm -hmm. you know, in the presidency. Um, he, he, he even told us that he had arrested the dollar. You, you understand? Um, the unemployment, the lady, the... The lady, the, the, the new force, the new force um, running, mate. running mate was talking about is a function of Do Dr. Baumier's incapacities and, in fact, incompetence, mm. to tell the truth, if we are just to be honest. Mm. Because Dr. Baumier has had it all. And he's got an, he, he also had extraordinary support from his boss, okay. the president. I remember that president, Kufuadu, said that Dr. Baumier is the wisest man in Ghana. Mm. By the way, I also remember that President Rowling said that P.V. Obin was the wisest man in Ghana. Mm. And this is where we are right now. The unemployment, um, you know, she talks about. So we, we are in dire straits. You know, it might interest Ghanaians to know that the migration rate outside uh, from Ghana mm -hmm. is unprecedented. The only time, apart from now, that migration was higher was in the 1981 to 83, mm. the coup d'etat and the famine. Mm. But right now, migration is so intense in Ghana amongst our youth that even the secretary to the president of Ghana, I'm talking about lawyer BDHU, mm -hmm. had to warn the Canadians to tamp down. Apart from the dollar, you know, exposing the fundamentals of a weak economy, mm. the other item that tells the truth about the economy of any country is the direction of the youth with their feet. In this country right now, the youth of the country are crossing the Sahara Desert and dying in droves. They are joining boats trying to cross the Mediterranean and we have a lot of Ghanaian bodies at Lampedusa. Okay, so it boils down to the fact that Dr. Baumia is ineffective. Now, he may run the most sophisticated campaign, the most expensive campaign, because when I look at Dr. Baumia's campaign, and I remember Dr. Baumia before 2016, wow, what a transformation. Does he live in Ghana? He's so wealthy, and that's fine. And that's fine. We wish we were as wealthy as Dr. Baumia, no, but, but we are not. Mm -hmm. And so we intend to change him. The CPP wants to tackle the unemployment element, mm. you know, afflicting the youth of this country by the introduction of what we call the Ghana Bashers. Okay. Now, under the Ghana Bashers strategy or the Ghana Bashers policy, we are guaranteeing every citizen of this country 20,000 Ghana cities as your share of the republic in a manner of speaking. You will pay Ghanaians 20,000? No, we will not pay Ghanaians 20,000 cities. We are giving you equity in this country of 20,000 cities. Okay. So that if you say you want to be a hairdresser, we can, you know, make it available to you to facilitate the setting up and creation of your business. However, for instance, if you want to team up with others to create a bigger factory, let's say the Commander factory mm. that President Kufuado and Dr. Baumia could not translate into jobs, not even one job. See, Ghanaians, you got to pay attention. Dr. Baumia inherited a $35 million factory, brand new, 
He couldn't employ even one person in it. And then today, what is he talking about? So staying on point with the Ghana bashes. Yeah, so that I, I can bring you back. But of course, but of course. Also so the $35 million, mm -hmm. or let's say we need $10 million to get it running. We can bring together as many Ghanaian youth that with 20000 apiece make up the amount necessary. And if they are interested, then we will let it fly. Mm. Um, so we have the Ghana bashes is just one of the ways. We are talking about agro show. Yeah, uh, before we get to that, let me but allow Dr. Ramsey to also come. So but, Dr. Ramsey, but we just must make sure that we, we, we get rid of Dr. Oh. Baumia so that we can get work to do in this country. All right, Dr. Ramsey, we've got three ways to go. What is the focus now for the movement? Elton, let me take this opportunity to say a very good evening to your cherished viewers and the highly stoical people of Ghana who are waiting to see an ultimate transformation in their lives. The people of Ghana have been coupled over the years since the inception of our fourth republic by the duopoly of the MPP and the NDC that has created a divisive society in our country today that nothing is going on. Today, as it stands now, youth unemployment is at 1.9 million, mm. right? The CD is Africa's fourth worst performing currency. Mm. Today, businesses are not able to receive some form of credits from the bank because interest rates on loans are quite high. Too high. So, Elton, mm -hmm. Honorable Alan Kojo Tramantin has brought what we call the Great Transformational Plan, which is seeking to give us a stable economy that will grow, that will be resilient, and will offer prosperity to all Ghanaians, irrespective of your religious affiliation or your partisan affiliation. Mm -hmm. Today, development in this country is skewed towards your partisan affiliation and even appraisal systems and our public polities. Mm -hmm. If you do not have an, an allegiance to your political party, right, it might not allow you to be able to achieve your goals as a citizen. Mm -hmm. And that's what we've seen. And this has been propagated by the flaws in our constitution. So Honorable Alan Kojo Tramantin is promising the people of Ghana that we are going to ensure that going forward, we amend the constitution. There will be some form of debt sustainability management mm. that he promises when he comes into power, he will cap the debt that any government can borrow. And we're not going to borrow more than 55% of our GDP. Right. Public expenditure will not be more than 10% of our GDP. And of course, to finance our budget deficit, he's proposing that, and he would ensure it by law, that no government is going to exceed its budget deficit by, by more than 5% of our GDP. Mm. So these are sustainable, I would say, solutions that can be able to stabilize our macroeconomy. Mm. And when it comes to the youth issues with the youth unemployment, he, he is, is actually the- issue for the, for the for yes. elections. Honorable Alan Kojo Tramante is actually a panacea to the joblessness of the youth. And he is promote, promoting what we call the Start Your Own Business Initiative, where students in our tertiary institutions would get financing from the uh, Entrepreneurship Empowerment Fund to support their startups. And I always say this, and I am, I am a key product of such a policy, but in China, for the record, I, Dr. Ramsey Nusa, mm -hmm. I am the first ever black African to ever set up a tech startup in the Silicon Valley of China. Mm. It went, during my university days, I built a $14 million tech startup, valued at $14 million. And this was as a result of the initiative that I, 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 I went through, through the support of the Chinese government. I got support of over $100,000. You start up a $40 yes. million project. Yes, exactly. So I always say that there are two types of university leavers. There are those that are seeking employment, and there are those that can start up their own business. Mm. And through this policy intervention, I think that we can be able to incubate entrepreneurs in this country. And we are promoting what we call an enterprise economy, mm. that the private sector will be the engine of growth. And you know, the issue of corruption uh, and, and mismanagement, I mean, I watched Earlier on your interview about uh, His Majesty the, the Ashanti King, Otunfo yeah. said to The matter with the Confanoti teaching. Yes, the uh, trying to raise $10 million, mm. right, to revamp the healthcare facility of a the public hospital. institution, actually, for that matter. Yes, a public institution. Unfortunately, and for the people of Ghana to know that under the management or the leadership of Mahmoud Baumia and Nanado Danko Akufado, they spent $58 million on the National Cathedral, 
which is left lying there. Not even a single block has been laid. But it has turned into what people call now <laughs> the world's largest swimming pool. Mm. Elton, $58 million. Yes, still, the people of Kumasi, which is a stronghold of the MPP, just need $10 million to revamp the Confanoche Chitin Hospital. They gave $12 million to contractors for the Pualugu Irrigational Dam, which he promised to the, the people of the northern region. Where is the dam? Where is the dam? There's something I've, I've identified, even though Alan is contesting to be elected president. Yes. I don't see a lot of people contesting the parliamentary on the tickets of the movement. Okay. So in the event that you win, yeah. question people have asked is how are you going to govern? Yes. When, when you may not have a strong parliamentary backing. Yes. Um, Elton, I think that if you look at the wisdom in our constitution, the 1992 constitution, people go into parliament to represent their constituents and not their political party. Mm. That is a fact. Even though you go into parliament on the ticket of a political party, you go in there to represent the interests of your constituents. And so if it is transformation that your constituents are looking out for, if it's development that your constituents are looking out for, and you have a leader who can provide policies and give that leadership to be able to alleviate the suffering of your people, are you saying that you're not going to collaborate with that person? against the, the, the will of your party. That is what we are, we are trying to change. We are changing the status quo, that we need to be able to develop a nationalistic agenda, that Ghana's interest should be ethical than the interest of all political parties. And so if you're a member of parliament of the MPP or the NDC, or CPP, and you're in parliament, you should seek the interests of, of Ghana first and not the interests of your political party. Mm -hmm. And so these are all, I'll say, propaganda. Honorable Alan Kojo Tramante is going to promote a government of national unity. Right. Today, we've seen the divisiveness in our country, that today, parliament is at a gridlock, right? Mm -hmm. We've seen the, 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 the chaos in parliament, which people call it a constitutional crisis. Right. Right? And this is as a result of the duopoly and the divisiveness of our political landscape. And Honorable Alan Kojo Dramante is saying that, look, we've had this system for 32 years. It's not working for us. Let us all come on board and bring people that have the merits and the credibility to be able to promote good governance and alleviate the suffering of the people. Today, Elton, if you do not belong to a political party, right, you will not be given the opportunity to develop at all. I, I, I mean, contribute to the governance of this country. And that is why we are saying that Ghana for so long has been promoting what we call a kakistocracy, where the less privileged citizens are the ones that are in privileged positions to determine the future of this country. And they don't have the merits and the credentials. Let, let, let me allow uh, <coughs> Sylvester to come in. Yeah, the question really is, is the, PP, is the CPP really ready? We've always been ready. I mean, how... how how can you ask the, the, the creators of the republic if they are ready for the republic? I mean, before the CPP, there was no Ghana. Mm -hmm. So we, are, we have always been ready. But I wanted to address my, my good doctor from the Yellow House, Alan Chamartin's party. Mm -hmm. um, movement for change. change, exactly. And also just point out the clear disingenuity in the position, you know, and from where he's coming from, he may have forgotten, or maybe he was unaware mm -hmm. that Mr. Alan Chamartin is best friends with President Kufuado mm. and also the Vice President, Dr. Baumia, for eight years, almost eight years. He sat on, on, in, in the same cabinet room with them every day when they were making decisions and also eating salad. He was eating the salad <laughs> song. You understand? And now today he comes to say, did, did Dr. Alan Chamartin know all of this? So we in the CPP and most Ghanaians, we don't have time for Alan. You have the opportunity for, for Alan, Dr. Alan Chamartin because he and Dr. Baumia are best of the same feather. They've been eating the same salad at cabinet meetings. Now, um, I was talking about CPP, unemployment. That is our, what is killing us in this country, mm -hmm. especially the youth. And I was pointing out that the reason why the youth travel across the desert and the Mediterranean to Europe to look for jobs is because they're looking for capital. Mm -hmm. Just to come and open a business in Ghana. Right. All right, and you know, of course, that Dr. Baumia, despite all his high falutin economic talk, could not deliver. So we come down to industrialization, mm -hmm. which all of us, all the political parties are talking about, which the CPP actually have, we, we have done it. Mm -hmm. We did it. Indeed, um, the Commander Sugar Factory is our product mm -hmm. originally. So we see that industrialization is good for Ghana, coming from the government, moving into action in that regard. But the CPP also has strategies that the youth 
can take advantage of without a $35 million project from the government of Ghana. Mm. For instance, we are looking at areas in the new economies emerging, like drone aviation. Right. That is an opportunity where a youth, an entrepreneurial youth, can with about 20,000 cities from the Ghana Bashe start a drone aviation business, be the eye in the sky for the police or the immigration border or the army. And you, amongst real estate opportunities, we are talking about artificial intelligence. We want to push our youth there. You don't need $35 million. And I'll land in a minute mm. to start that. $20,000 or less could do that. Particularly, particularly, we mm. want to encourage our, get, our youth to get involved in gaming. I'm not talking about bet, betting on the soccer games. We're mm -hmm. talking about, for instance, when you're in Trotro, I take Trotro mm -hmm. quite a bit. You see a lot of the ladies, when they, are, they have settled in their Trotro, they open their phone and they are playing a game where balls are dropping and in a, yeah. those games. Mm -hmm. This is a multi-billion dollar industry. Of course. And Ghana is not participating. And we have the vice president going around the country opening apps. Instead of simply helping people to do these things. So the vice president is completely bankrupt of original ideas. And he's only living and thriving on his vice presidency, the presidency, and you know, the love that president Kufuadu has for him. Just and that's why we must vote him out. Yeah, well, but we have much to go. I'll, I'll bring but Ramsey, we have to go. I'll bring Dr. Ramsey in. But let me bring in uh, Dr. Hassan Ayariga. Uh, AP, uh, Dr. Ayariga, tell me, where are you now? We, we, we've got three weeks to go. Yeah, so we, we have lost Dr. Hassan Ayariga. So, 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 so then let me land here. Okay, so what so I that I can, uh, so that he can come. He's got some response for, so, the, for the criticism so, of so, Alak So what I'm saying here is that we want the youth in this country, because they are IT-oriented and IT-savvy, to get involved in gaming, for instance, okay, because it's a million-dollar industry and it doesn't require some extraordinary finances from the IMF mm. to be able to implement it. So when you listen to what I'm saying here, and then when you listen to what Mr. Ayariga has been saying, mm -hmm. and what my good man, the doctor from Yellow, is saying, mm -hmm. and what the rest of them are saying, you see that they are largely lost, especially Dr. Baumia, who somehow thinks that he, it is going to be possible. Doc, it's not going to be possible. Dr. Ramsey, your response yes. to uh, um, so now you tell me the plan for the youth. Elton, uh, it's quite uh, interesting to hear a person who opposed to Nkumaism Criticize. Just one second. Hassan Yarga has okay. got you. So I, I can let, let, let me have him for the next few minutes. The APC's presidential candidate, Dr. Hassan Yarga. Uh, Dr. Yarga, tell me, where are you now? We've got three weeks to go. Good evening to you and mm. good evening to your cherished listeners. I'm in Accra. Yesterday, I'm sure if you watch GTV, I had the presidential encounter with Ghanaians. And I outlined my policy vision for Madagana and um, my strategies to become president and my campaign policies. So currently, we're in Accra. We just did some constituencies and then we just got back to the office to our way for tomorrow. We are going to move to Easter Way. And from the Easter Way, we are going to Ashanti. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, pick up your voice more. It, it's difficult to hear. Yes. You. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. We'll go to Ashanti, Bono, Bono East, and then subsequently we'll hit the northern region, Upper East and Upper West. So 21 days to elections, these are the times that all political parties must hit hard, get to the people, send our messages and policies for the Ghanaian people to buy into and to vote for a change. Because um, as you're aware, the problem now is the high level of uh, uh, voter apathy. That is the problem we are facing in Ghana now. Many Ghanaians that we have interacted with and have engaged with are not willing to vote. And that is the biggest problem many of the political parties and leaders are not seeing. Many people are just waiting for seven of these demands to come and they will not go out and vote and will record huge, huge, huge voter apathy and record low turnout. And I have been talking to them, in as much as you are not satisfied and not happy with current and previous administration, that should be the reason why you should come out and make a change. 
you are not making a recycle of NDC and NPP, but you're coming out to give APC, Hassan Ayala, the chance to change the country, transform our country, and build this country for the betterment of everybody. Right. With the policies of flat rate of EPG, flat rate of water, free port, DT, okay, the national data system, a national development plan, change of mindset, Ghanaians and Ghana first policy. A nationwide job centers all over the country, turning Ghana into a lockdown to become a production, manufacturing, and industrial hub. Right. An issue of bringing on board the 24 hour economy to turn Ghanaians to work 24 hours of the clock to achieve economic independence. These are the policies of the is proposed. Right. A minimum wage of 150 to 300 Ghana cities daily, a, 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 a wage salary, a minimum salary with of 5,000 guineas citizens to benefit. And then employment benefit for those who do not have jobs, housing benefit for civil society and, and uh, civil, civil uh, engineers and civil workers. These are the policies we have proposed. So oh. many policies that can transform this country. All right. All right, we'll leave it here. Uh, time up. Uh, Dr. Hassan, thank you so much. We'll obviously touch base with you as you embark on that campaign tour. That's how much we are wrapping up. Yes. Your few uh, uh, comments before, <clears throat> before we go. And uh, I feel highly melancholic to hear a person who opposed to Nkumaism give such criticisms to Honorable Alan Kojo Traumatin. For his record and for him to know that his founder, Dr. Kwame Nkumar, who helped grow the UGCC, who was a key proponent of the UGCC, left the UGCC in 1949 to form the CPP and became... Oh, please, please. No, please. please. You, are, you, are, you are interjecting. When you are, we're we're talking talking in government. Uh, 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 when, no, please, we can't... We can't we, we're actually wrapping up, so perhaps you yeah, can address... When you were speaking, I was quiet. You, you, uh, yes. you can address yes. our viewers and listeners so, on so your plans there's going something we, You see, they always propel this propaganda, and we have to set the record straight. Mm. There's something we call collective responsibility and individual accountability, mm. right? Let's look at the individual, the candidate, Honorable Alan Kudotra Martin, as a whole. What has he been able to contribute to this country? For your record, when he, put, when he brought about the one district, one factory policy, we have two, 269 factories currently operational under the 1D1F. He has been able to create 170,000 direct and indirect jobs, mm. even though he was shortchanged for the budgetary allocation for the 1D1F policy. And he is saying that he is the only candidate among all the candidates contested who can be able to promote industrialization and import substitution. Thank you. That will stabilize our city and that will provide a lot of jobs for Thank our youth. You. And he's bringing about this policy in the history in of this country. Yes, 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 oh, please, yes, let me wrap up. Oh, yeah, me, the time is up. No, it's okay. The time is up. We'll, we'll, have, we'll okay. have another show on this. All I'm saying is that he, up, not, you've got 10 seconds. he cannot eat his cake and have it. Mm -hmm. Alan Chamartin. Perhaps you should speak to Alan the Ghanaian people. But of course, Alan Chamartin was sitting in cabinet with President Kufuado for eight years, chilling together, eating salad together. They were on the aeroplane, the bathroom we'll, aeroplane. We'll leave it here. The aeroplane bathroom. We'll, they were, they were bathroom we'll in the aeroplane. We'll leave it here and, and continue Monday. But this Both has been the pause. My name is Elton Robe. You've been listening to Dr. Ramsey from the Movement for Change, the, 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 from, from the Yellow Camp. Of course, uh, this is the first time we are meeting, it's and hopefully we will have more, 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 more of such encounters. Yeah, thank you. you also heard uh, Alan. Has, Alan is a reincarnation of Dr. Kwame. Of Kwame. course, the, the running mates of the, uh, 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 the, 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 the the force, the new force. See you same time next week, Monday. Have a good week.